Hallelujah. So uh, today I thought to uh, share about guarding, guarding our heart. Okay. So you know what is meant by guarding our heart? How to guard? Or you know, who can guard our, our our heart? Okay. What is heart? Okay. We will start from there. What is heart? Where is it? <laughs> in in the Greek they call heart as cardia. That's why it's called as cardiology. Cardia came from Greek. So what is the meaning of the heart? Is that this this pumping machine? Yeah, it's 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 yeah, we can say, but it's not exactly spirit is separate and heart is separate. So what is heart? Many times you read in Bible. You know, we, we you know, sing also, I worship you with all my heart. Where is that heart? Where? Yeah, yeah, understood, understood. Yes. Yes. So, where is that? Is it a physical organ or is it a spiritual thing or is it, is it, is it having both? Both. Okay. Okay, now many, you know, the scholars of the Bible says, okay, you now some people believe heart as the organ itself because that's where the, the blood, because the life of man is found in the blood. So they say, you know, heart is like this heart only. Here only we think, you know, here only, you know, this is what heart is about. But that's not heart actually. You know, but you know, many uh, theologians, they say, the subconscious mind is the heart of man. The subconscious mind is the heart of man. Okay, how do you will know this? And the subconscious mind will reveal your spiritual beliefs. Or your belief system is designed in your subconscious mind. Okay, you know, uh, let me ask you one thing. Uh, <coughs> demons are there, right? Demons. We can see, you know, demon possessed peoples, right? Now, where the demons are, you know, possessing people? You know, when, when, the, when the demons are trying to come out from people, what is happening? They lose, they lose their conscious mind and things are starting speaking from their subconscious mind. Got it, huh? Did you saw any times people having the demons and you know the, when the demons are being uh, you know, cast out, how they behave? They don't know, know what they are trying to do. Yes or no? Did you ever saw that? You know, they may be rolling in the, you know, on the floor, they will, you know, they will act like, you know, snake, they will act like a monkey, they will act like all these things. Why? From where it is coming out? Where is the hiding place? Is the mind? No, they are, you know, very good people, they are, you know, working, they are earning, they understand the scriptures. But it is happening where? The subconscious mind. Subconscious mind is the heart of the man. The Bible says in the book of Genesis, you know, uh, when uh, when God you know, bless uh, Noah, you know, I, I know the heart of man is full of evil. The heart of man is full of evil. But still I love them, still I bless them. Because, you know, you know, you know God wants us to be with him as a righteous people. You know, he has not created us to judge. He has not created us to condemn. He has not created us to destroy. Hallelujah. Judgment, condemnation, and I know it's all for whom? It's for, it's for Lucifer and for his team. Not for, not for human men. I mean the uh, humans. So the, the heart of the man is a subconscious mind. That is where we can see what we really believe. Okay. You know, when you, you know, go through the dark or the evil days of your life, when you find you know, things are difficult, you know, what is, you know, you, know uh, you can feel suddenly your faith is drying out. Why? You know, when you know but things are fine, you, know, you feel everything is good, you will praise God, you will pray. Why? What it is showing? It is showing the real belief system of individuals. You no, know, Bible says in the, in the book of uh, Peter, 
So after you are being tested, you know, you will be like what? You will be like a gold. So, you know, uh, the fact is that we believe many things in our minds, but that is not the part of our real belief system. You know, Bible says, you know, uh, this is a certain uh, parable. The, the sower came and uh, what? So the seeds. Some are on the roadside, some are on the rocky place, and some are on the good land. That shows the, the state of individual's heart. Okay, you know, Bible says, you now the, the first person, whatever it was, it was it is put, put on the roadside, it means they were not understanding the scriptures. Hence, they will what took those those seeds from their heart. Hallelujah. No, uh, many times you know we hear many messages, but you know we are we are failing to apply that truth in our life. Yes or no? Yes or no? Answer me so that I can easily. You know it's not a big uh, message. I'm just you know we are just discussing. Hallelujah. No, many you know we know many scriptures. But many times, these all the scriptures are not being useful for us. How many of you go through such situations? We feel like the, you know the, the the word of God is now not doing anything in my life. Suddenly, you know, we can see everything is dark around us. Why? Because whatever we have received from the scripture. We are not understanding it. It means we are not you know, received the revelations from the scriptures. Hallelujah. <laughs> the, the, the understanding in another way, we can call it as a revelation, a personal revelation about the scriptures. Hallelujah. See, the, the mind, the, the conscious mind is like a keyboard. You will be feeding, you know, many things. It will go to your mind, your, your memory. But it will you know as long as you are not received it as a revelation, it will not go into your subconscious. So what happened? You know, when we when we you know, go through all the bad, all the evil situations, okay, you no, know, sometimes you know we can see a word will come from inside of us. Hallelujah. A word will come from inside of us. You know, suddenly we will know, remember. No, uh, no, uh, one promise which you know God has made to us maybe 10 years back, suddenly it will come out. Hallelujah. We will be energized. Hallelujah. Because you know, those are the things which we understood and which we took, and it is stored in our subconscious mind. Now, when we go into the bad situations, all the word of God, all the scriptures which we have understood, which means or which you have personalized or which we have you know, received as a revelation, it will come and help us in time of our our bad situations. Hallelujah. That's why you know, we have to study the word of God you know, continually. We have to receive the word of God continually. We have to soak our mind in the word of God. What happens? As we spend that time in the word of God, our mind is getting what? Renewed. Okay. See, the mind is the input of our subconscious mind. So when your mind is getting renewed, it will affect your belief system. Hallelujah. It will affect your belief system. Because our this conscious mind is always, you know, beliefs based on the situations. And we can see, you know, when you know, Jesus and the disciples, they were on the board. They were on the board. They saw the things are not, 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 uh, not in a good way. What happened? The fear. That is what the actual state of their beliefs. Hallelujah. Now then, uh, whatever Jesus immediately you told them, you don't have faith. Okay. You now where this faith will be holding? Where we will be you know, holding this faith? It is in our subconscious mind. Hallelujah. This is in our subconscious mind. So what happened is that subconscious mind is like a is like a tube, is like a is like a pipe okay, which connect with the spiritual brain. Hallelujah. Which connect with the spiritual brain. 
it can be connected with the Holy Spirit and through the realm of God and the same way it can be connected with the powers of darkness hallelujah are you getting it you can see the word belief if you take yoga or any other any other any other way of you no know, you know this spiritual exercise it is what it is taking our subconscious mind and what entering uh, taking it to the, uh, the 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 spiritual darkness hallelujah but we are not like that we our 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 heart is connected with whom holy spirit hallelujah hallelujah no that's all that's the reason the lord was able to you know, speak to his children through his i mean uh, to his prophets even even through the dreams even through the visions you know we you know many of the apostles having the experience called the transit you know, peter says you know uh, on the noon time I, I went to a transit and god has shown me a vision what that means transit means what how many of you know that what is what is meant by transit a change of state you know how says you know i went to third heaven uh, a third heaven i don't know i don't know whether it is in the flesh or without flesh we can see you know uh, john says in the book of revelation when i know i was i was in the spirit what happened that the subconscious mind started seeing the heavenly things because the subconscious mind is the pipe okay for us to connect with the heavenly things hallelujah so you know you know we can see many places uh you know uh you know we can see the same way you now devil also try to enter where enter where the heart of the man do you have any uh, examples in new testament for that do we have any examples on uh, judas bible says what huh? yeah they will enter in the heart of judas okay that is before the crucifixion of jesus christ but after the resurrection eh Ananias they are believers Ananias and Sapphira Peter asked to him how devil has deceived and filled your heart what happened now let us take the part someone can read Acts uh, five verse one to four. Acts chapter five. One versus four. Sorry, one to four. But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira his wife sold a possession and kept back part of the proceeds. His wife also being aware of it and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the? Hallelujah! Why Satan has filled your heart? to lie to the holy spirit and keep back part of the price of the land hmm. for yourself hallelujah why it remained was it not your own and after it was sold was it not in your own control yes why have you conceived this thing in your heart you have not lied to men but to god hallelujah he is a believer having a no good heart to give money also you know in the in the bible in the in new testament you know there are three people who disappointed with jesus christ and with the church there are three people now all of them were concerned about money all of them were concerned of their heart is towards money 
Who will have they? How many of you know? The Judah second verse, before the one person was there. A rich man came to Jesus Christ and asked, I am doing everything for my childhood. Then Jesus said, what? Sell everything, what you have and come and follow me. He said, no, he, uh, what happened? He was a rich person. So he was not able to follow Jesus Christ. Then, Jesus, then the disciple asked, Lord, which means the rich cannot enter into the kingdom of God. He says, it may be, it is possible with God. It is possible with God. And second person is who? Judah. Judah, right? Judah is You know, uh, you know he, his heart was big in money. How many of you know that? There's a verse in the John, it said he was a thief. Let's go to the blood. He was a thief. John 2 verses 6. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief as keeper of the money bag, he used to help himself to what was put into it. John 2 verses 6. Okay, he says what? Hallelujah. So, which means what? His heart, even though he was with Jesus Christ, but his heart was not given to Jesus Christ. The same thing for Ananias and yeah. What happened? Even though they came to Christ, now here what is happening? They are not doing this out of faith. They want to please the apostles, they want to please the believers that we did something great for the church. Hallelujah. The intention of the heart was not right. Because they have not understood the gospel. They have not understood Jesus Christ. They have not understood the calling. Hallelujah. See, in Christianity, the God is not expecting from us to please him. There is only one way to please God. What is that? Believing in one whom He sent. Believing in one whom He sent. We cannot please God with any of our doings. Okay, we cannot buy anything from God by giving money. What they thought actually, they thought, you know, by giving this this amount, maybe you know that money may be you know uh, good money because when you see the intentions. You know, uh, you know, they may thought uh, if we give the better amount, the apostles might, you know, oh, very good, come, really good. See, take example as Ananias and Sapphira. Hallelujah. But the apostles' heart was not behind money. Hallelujah. So they understood the intention of the heart. You know, see, you know, what I'm trying to say is that the heart is so wicked. The heart is so wicked. For unbeliever and for believer. You know, when I say unbeliever, I am talking about a person who knows Jesus Christ, okay, but he is not actually believing Jesus Christ. Okay, I am not talking about the unbelievers on the road. Okay, I am speaking about the unbelievers in the church. I am speaking about the, about the believers in the church. Hallelujah. You now many people can, you know, you know, uh, when you study the book of uh, the Hebrews, okay, that book is addressed to the believers in the church and the unbelievers in the church. In the time of apostles, there were, there were two kinds of believers or the, or the people who were attending the church. Which means some people, you know, you know, like to follow Jesus Christ, it is good to follow Jesus Christ, but they have not really understood the finished work of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now for them, oh God came, died. It is you know, it's, it's, it's nice to hear, it's nice to you know, follow, but you know, still their heart is not convinced. Their heart is not convinced. Hallelujah. So you know, all the times in the churches, we can see two kinds of people. One is the believers who really understood what Christ has done on the cross for me. Hallelujah. You know, they never think about money. They never 
worry about situations. They are happy with what they have. Hallelujah. That is what the spiritual ma uh, maturity. The spiritual maturity is uh, not you know, trying to become so big. It is, you know, always happy with what you have. And thank God for all the situations in our life. That shows the maturity. Hallelujah. You know, it is like a branch resting on the tree is a Christian life. Don't try to you know, you know, produce house of something. Just rest in the tree and the tree will supply you. The Bible says cast out all the burdens on the game because he is caring for us. Hallelujah. So us, you know, us uh, you know, Christians, you know, no need to try to work, work out and you know, you know, get so many things. No, no, see, it's never been that what we should not work. It's not like that. You have to work. But you know, don't you know stress. Don't you know worry. You know, worry is a big work. Worry is a big work. Always worrying, I don't have a good job, I don't have a good money, I don't have a good salary. Why? Why? We are not understood. Bible says to make us rich, Christ became poor on the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bible says, don't look at your situations. It says, look on the cross. What Christ has done for you. It says what? Remember this grace. To make you rich. What Christ has done for us. He became a poor. He became poor on the cross. To make us rich. Hallelujah. Are you getting it? Hallelujah. Instead of worrying, look at the cross. So, you know, so, you know, so, uh, you know uh, mainly in, in our life, in, in human's life, see, this money is a main place where people worry a lot. Yes or no? Yes, right? If I help it, you know, uh, another truth, next to God, what is the most powerful thing in the world? Is it David? What? Money. Not David. Bible says the love of money is, is the root cause of all the evil things. So the love of money, I don't know anything, I'm just telling you an example. Because, because the Bible you know, very you know, clearly says this. Love of money is the root of all evil things. That is what happened in the life of that, that uh, rich man. That is what happened in the life of Judah. That is what happened in the life of Ananias and Sapphira. Now, uh, we can see another person in the book of Acts. You know, you know, he was trying to give money to Apostle and ask him to do, give him the gift. Hallelujah. This is happening today also. Hallelujah. But it is not like that. Bible says righteousness is a free gift. Gift of Holy Spirit is a gift. Will any of you pay and get any gift? No. Yes or no? Then it's not a gift, right? Then what happened? All the rich person will stand in front of the church and you know, they will give like you know, dollars and dollars and dollars. Let my hand, let me go and give the sick. It is not like that. Hallelujah. It is because one person paid the all price. One person paid the entire price. Who is that? Who is that? Jesus Christ. Bible says he came down to give give to men. He appointed, he appointed some as apostles, some as prophets, some as evangelists, some as pastors, and some as teachers. Hallelujah. He came down to give us gifts. He is not expecting anything back from us. Hallelujah. He is not expecting anything back from us. You know, just imagine, you know, you know, any tree. No, expect, expect anything from their branch to give back. It has to, it will be a fruit. Okay, it will be a fruit. But, okay, for that, this branch is not giving back anything to the tree. Hallelujah. But, this branch will reflect the goodness of this tree. Hallelujah. This branch will reflect the goodness of this tree. So, you know, I was just trying to, you know, give you understanding about heart. Are you, got it now? Okay. So, so you know, in the heart, you know, we can, you know, uh, Bible says, you know, when we understand 
to the real new covenant. Bible says in the book of Hebrews, uh, somebody can take and read that, about the new covenant. In the last days, I will not remember their sins, I will put my uh, word in their hearts and I will write my laws in their minds. Hallelujah. So if that is true, if that is true, now you tell me whether devil can take any advantage over us. Are you getting it now? Hallelujah. Bible says, the last days, brother, that, uh, read that, huh? Ephesians, sorry, not Ephesians, uh, Hebrews 10. Ten yes. Okay, so so what it is about? This is what the real state of a believer. Read the present. This is the covenant that I will make with them after those days. This is the covenant I will make with them after those days. What is that those days about? Those days are about after law. It is talking about after law. What God God, God is going to do? Yes, brother. Read that. I will put my laws into their heart and in their minds. In their minds, I will write them. I will write them. Then he adds, yeah. their sins and their lawless deeds. Their sins and the lawless deeds. I will remember no more. I will remember no more. This is what the state of you and me who believe in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are a new creature and this is the shape of that new new uh, creature bible says we have a new self now we have a new heart now hallelujah god has given us what a yeah? new self a new heart and that heart is how it is having the word of god inside of it hallelujah no no uh, no god has not not just made everything you no know, clean and he left no what he has done he is presently staying he is always staying with us and you know and not that his word is dwelling inside of us you know inside of our heart and our minds are not the same mind of old bible says we are the mind of christ we have the mind of christ okay so this is what uh, supposed to be the stature of a real believer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you uh, getting it? No, because you know, uh, Bible says, I will not, I, I will never leave you, I will not forsake you because He is always with us and He has given us a new heart with full of His laws and He has given us a new mind which is full of His words. Hallelujah. Now, just imagine if, if uh, now this word is uh, true. Okay, now you tell me whether the uh, Ananias and Sapphira was a you know real believers. Tell me if this is what the real state of a of a believer. Then Ananias and and Sapphira really accepted Jesus Christ. Some answers. Do they really accept Jesus Christ? Tell me. Yeah, they, 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 have, they accepted, but, but they have not understood the reality of the salvation which they received. Hallelujah. As long as you and me does not know the reality of a Christian life, devil will always take advantage. Hallelujah. He will take hold of our heart and mind and he will 
play with it. Hallelujah. That is the reason, you know, the Apostle Paul and other apostles, they were always, you know, trying to renew the minds of believers with the knowledge of God. Hallelujah. See, you know, we cannot renew our mind, our understanding, uh, you know, without the word of God. It is, it is very, very difficult because in the outside world, there is no revelation about God. Outside the scriptures, there is no revelation about God. If we want to gain the knowledge of God, we have to go through what? Go through the word of God. We have to listen to the word of God. We have to meditate the word of God. Hallelujah. Because when, when we soak our mind into the word of God, we are renewing day by day. We are receiving a fresh revelation about God every day. Hallelujah. You know, the Bible says, you know, uh, Jesus, Jesus said in his you know, prayer, Father, give us our daily bread. It is not talking about this bread actually. That is, okay, we can take that way. But for us, it is about a spiritual food. A new revelation from God about himself is required for us every day. Hallelujah. When we study the, you know, the scriptures, you know, we should not study the scriptures to understand or to find some good promise words. Hallelujah. Because all the promises are yes and I mean in Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. All the promises are good, but we know it is already fulfilled in Jesus Christ. But why we should you know, study the word of God? Always to get a fresh revelation about our Father. Fresh revelation about our God. Fresh revelation about Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, that is the only way we can guard our heart. That is the only way we can guard our heart. We always need the revelations. We always need a fresh word from God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, uh, when we talk about the uh, uh, heart, you know, Bible, you know, uh, we can see more you know, detailed understanding about heart in the book of Proverbs. Okay, it was written by who? Solomon. We can see he knew all this, but finally he was not able to guard his heart. He failed to guard his heart. He knew all this truth. No use. As long as you know the truth in your mind, it will not help you. It has to convert as a revelation and it has to come inside of you. The real being of you should know what you believe. Hallelujah. The, the real being of you or the, or the real inner person of you should know the real belief or he should know the real God or he should know who is Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. You know, there are, there are many verses where we study the book of Proverbs. You know, he says the heart is a seat of wisdom, of trust, of diligence. You know, and in the same place we can see disobedience, wicked imaginations, lust, craftiness, and it also understanding and dishonest, foolishness, bitterness, sorrow, backsliding, arrogance, prejudgment, anxiety, envy. It is all in where? It is all in our heart. That is what the real heart of you and me. As long as we have this day, it is impossible for God to bless a man. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That is the reason God has given us a new, new heart, a new belief system, a new thought, a new understanding. And that heart is what? Full of what? Full of God's word. Hallelujah. So, you know, when you take a believer, one who believes in Jesus Christ, he has a new heart. But the problem is that his mind is not willing to accept this truth. Hallelujah. You know, uh, how uh, they will deceive people? How? How you do it? Lies. Okay. No one thing. You know, Jesus Christ is the only one person okay, who has completely revealed the heart of the Father and the same way he is the one who was exposed about David. Hallelujah. 
When you study the Old Testament, you will not get much understanding about the way. Yes or no? The same way, when you study the Old Testament, you will not get the exact picture about Father God. Okay, you know, for example, the Bible says, you know, God sent a, a, you know, a bad spirit upon Saul. Is, is, is the father is a good father or a bad father? Good father. So does a good father send a bad spirit to uh, Saul? Then why it is like that? Bible says God sent a spirit, a bad spirit upon Saul. And when uh, David, you know, sing and you know when David play his uh, guitar, what happened? That David will depart from him. But in in you know uh, New Testament, because Jesus Christ came down to destroy the works of devil. So which means God is sending both good things and God is sending the bad thing and in another place and through Jesus Christ he is telling I am good, I am good. Is that what? I am just opening the verses. So you have to understand that. So you know, what is your understanding? When you see in the Old Testament, you can see many places now God is sending evil spirits to some people. What is your understanding? How many of you know that is Bible? None of you know that? Did God send bad spirit to uh, upon, upon uh, King Saul? Any idea? How many of you read the books of Kings, book of uh, Judges, book of... Uh, no idea. Okay, the story. Okay, what happened? When he started behaving disobediently, Bible says, God has sent a wicked spirit upon who? So, when, when I read as a believer, I have doubt. Jesus said, I came to nullify the work of enemy. So, God himself is sending an evil spirit, which means God is making somebody under a under you know, evil influence and the you know, sun is coming and you know uh, delivering that person. So that's it's not sin is like you know something you know conflict with my faith. How many of you with me? Are you getting it or not? So you know, what is the truth? Whether God can send an evil spirit upon somebody? If he wish he can send. Hallelujah. See we only Jesus Christ revealed the heart of the Father. None of other prophets, none of you know, all the books in the Old Testament has given a little bit understanding about our, our God. And we have to understand another thing. All the Old Testament book is written with the Hebrews, Hebrews understandings and for the people of Hebrews. Which means it was written for whom? It was written by whom? It was written by Hebrew people. For who know the Hebrews' background? See, the belief of Hebrew people is that they believe all the good things and bad things come from God. How many of you know this? Like, you know, Indians, how we believe? Tell me, how is you know you know uh, outside you know uh, Christianity, Hindus how they believe? If I won't praise God, if I won't do what I promised, He will destroy me. Yes or no? Is then what is the difference between our God and uh, their God? Are you getting it? So what happened? This entire Old Testament is written with the Hebrew understandings. So they believe that both good things and bad things will come from God only. Hallelujah. To understand this, we have to we have to we have to study we know, I know this doubt actually, basically. If you know God can send a bad spirit to somebody, then you know, uh, then we say God is good all the time. There is no evil in him. Yes or no? There is no evil in him, right? But when you study 
the background of this scriptures why the bible is written such a way it is because the hebrew understanding is there everything from god whether it is a good or a bad they believe god is judging us god is punishing us that is what their understanding it is same like our indian 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 understanding that's why even our teachings okay whenever people in india teach about the gospel they mix with our culture and they will say god will punish you god will judge you god will destroy you why because we mix the gospel with our backgrounds hallelujah the hebrews mixed the word of god and and, and the gospel with their understandings hallelujah it looks very nice no no we will feel we you know uh, we feel the sermon like a very strong sermon but what it is about it is giving an opposite opposite understanding about god bible says god is love god is love that's yes all bible says there is no evil in him he is not a man to lie but you know you know when we preach normally what we say good you said that is fine but still god is angry with you on the other side he is watching over your life next week you will see what is going to happen if you don't you know do something like this especially i tell you openly when people says you don't put, put the tight your job is done we are showing a god not of the word of god not of the no no from the scriptures no from the teaching of apostles we are just teaching from where from our own understanding hallelujah god is a good god god is a good god he does not want destroy anyone if the purpose of god is to destroy somebody he might not send jesus christ on the cross hallelujah otherwise you know we can't preach the gospel otherwise there is no dignity in the word of god so if 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 the god is the one who is going to do both things then there is no good thing in the bible hallelujah so you know it was understanding of the hebrew people that they believe that all the good things and bad things will come from from god bible says uh, in the in the new testament bible says all the good gifts come from where from above but they have not received the complete understanding of father hallelujah all the prophets when abraham you know all all the prophets all the books of laws all the books of prophets all the books of psalm they were trying to bring what no little bit revelation about god hallelujah little bit revelation about god now when we when we study the book of you know uh, hebrews first chapter it says uh, just read the uh, first hebrews one verse through prophets he was speaking part by part First of all, first. God, who at various times and in various ways spoke in time past to the fathers by the prophets, yeah. has in these days, in these last days, spoken to us by His Son. Hallelujah! You can see it is talking about the Old Testament. The first part is about Old Testament. In the in the Old Testament time, the God was uh, what spoken to His children to whom prophets. The prophets receive some revelation. okay they will try to explain it to the uh, children of god that is israelites and you know they were writing this words in the bible you know based on their understanding their their language capacity hallelujah but in the last days now what happened god revealed everything through who he said if the prophets in the old testament was able to bring the complete understanding of jesus christ or our god 
then there is no need of Christ to come down. Yes or no? Harold, which means they failed to reveal God and His heart completely to the uh, children of God. That is the reason Israelites failed. Hallelujah. They are not received. But in the last days, He started to reveal through whom? His son. Now, Bible says, Now there is no one else saw the face of God. Who saw the face of God? Jesus alone. Hello, because the Bible says he came from where? Jesus came from Father. The Bible says, Me and He are one. Hallelujah. So they all, all the Old Testament revelation about God is just a big things. But it was really and completely and perfectly revealed to one person, that is Jesus Christ. Bible says in the book of Colossians, Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the fullness of divinity. Jesus Christ is the fullness of divinity in godly form. If you want to know God, if you want to know God and His attributes, if you want to know God and His characters, you should look to whom? Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Because Bible says in the book of, I think, Colossians chapter 2, it is, it is there. It says, the divinity of God was rested or you know, dull in a fleshly form in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is the fullness. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ is the fullness. All the revelations about God is, is you know, completely available in Jesus Christ. If you take about God's love, right? It's called agape love. In the book of uh, Corinthians, we can uh, see about love. First Corinthians chapter 13. There are 16 attributes of God's love. Hallelujah. Somebody can read. Uh, okay. Just, just go there. It is there. First Corinthians chapter 11 verses 13. It gives the complete, complete picture about God's love. That is, that is the attribute of God's love. Chapter, chapter 11, 11. Sorry, yeah, sorry, not 11. 10, chapter 30, 30 verses uh, 1. Yes. Yes. So you know here we can see 16 different attributes of God's love. All these 16 attributes were available in Jesus Christ. You just go and go to home and take all those all those individual attributes and look at Jesus Christ, you will find it there. Bible says love is kind. You can see the love of Jesus Christ. Love is patience. You can see on the cross of Calvary, he was so patient. Hallelujah. Just take these all 16 attributes and look at Jesus Christ. Because this love, the word used is agape. Agape means what? Self? Self-sacrificial love. A love, it just jump to help. It will not, you know, you know, worry about what is going to happen. But it will just always jump in the situation to help somebody. Hallelujah. A self-sacrificial love is the agape love. So uh, we can see this love, but you know, uh, you know uh, in uh, Old Testament, many places it says God is love. Yes, but it was not explained or it was not revealed completely in the Old Testament scriptures. Hallelujah. It was not completely, you know, you know many uh, saints of God in the Old Testament, they have experienced this love, but it was not completely revealed to the children of God. Bible says, now God has filled our hearts with 
his love hallelujah now we have his love in us why because our 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 in, inner personality is now totally changed we are a new creature hallelujah okay i am not uh, going to the topic okay so when we look at jesus christ there only we can find the real real heart of the god or the real uh, uh, who is the god what happened in the old testament they are not able to explain it properly so what happened many times we can see you know they believe all these instances came from god and what you know they used to say it is from god it is from god but when we take the new testament understanding and when we look at the old testament scriptures we are sure that this god is not such a, such a bad god to send the evil spirit to somebody hallelujah are you are you uh, getting it okay now we you know uh, who is this uh, devil who is this devil suppose yeah we say fallen angel right is in book of ezekiel chapter 20 28 he was created with nine beautiful stones somebody can read that ezekiel 28 you know um, why i am trying to you know at least that we have to understand one thing you know we all have you know very different understanding about devil and satan and you know all these things we many times as a believers we fear you no know, devil might attack me devil might kill me devil might destroy me okay so i just want to you know bring that understanding so that you can walk your life very free first of all understand that our god is a good god he is loving us so much you no know, did any 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 father you know try to harm a child in evil way no Bible says, "Ephraim, you are my child." To whom? To the uh, Israel people. Ephraim, I love you so much. Does that same God punish them with the evil things? See, they went through many disasters because of their sins. It is not the fault of God. Hallelujah! It is not because of the God they went to. Uh, what is that? Uh, Uh, you know uh, bad uh, situations they became slaves to uh, foreigners this not because the you know, god sent them because their sin took them to that place because their heart was so hardened they were not willing to accept the love of god they want to walk in their own ways and only because and you know, they were shepherded by such a host shepherds who are not willing to reveal the heart of Uh, God to them. Hallelujah. Okay, now uh, let us uh, read this. Yes, Ezekiel chapter twenty-eight. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me saying, "Son of man, take up a lamentation for the king of Tyre, yeah. and say to him, Thus says the Lord God, yeah. You were the seed of perfection. Ah, you were the seed of perfection. First, first quality of David will see here. What is that? Seed of perfection. Okay, just remember that. Right? Perfect one." full of wisdom so perfect and wisdom next perfect in beauty in beautiful he was so beautiful there is no one else like him okay that is what that is what it, it shows he is perfect full of wisdom and beauty okay next you were in eden uh, you were in eden the garden of god the garden of god every precious stone was your covering every precious stone was your covering sardius yeah was mm. diamond Yes. Yeah. Sapphire, turquoise, and emerald of gold. Hmm. The workmanship of your children and wives was prepared for you on the day he was made. Hmm. So see the beauty of that fallen angel. You are so perfect. Ah, next person. You are the anointed cherub who covered. He was a cherub himself. Hmm. I established you. I established you. You are on the holy mountain of God. You are on the holy mountain of God. You walked back and forth in the midst of fiery. You know uh, that is what the specialty of. Cherubs, okay. For them, they have what? Four, four faces. We study in the Bible study. Cherubs are being four faces. So now, if they want to go backward, they won't go. No, they turn and go. They just go backward. That's what he says. You walk back and forth in the midst of fiery stones. 
Yes. You were perfect in your ways. Your yes. Day you were created. Hmm. Still eating only one more. Hmm. Yes. By the abundance of your training, hmm. you came filled with violence. Filled with violence. And you sinned. You sinned. Uh -huh. Therefore, I cast you as a profane thing hmm. from the mountain of God. Hmm. And I destroyed you, O covering cherub. Hallelujah. And I destroyed you. Oh, covering cherub. So this is here we can see the creation of Lucifer. This is talking about Lucifer. And we can see the end of Lucifer. What has happened to him when he was thrown out from the heavenly places? Now, how many of you believe that devil has power? How many of you believe that devil can do something? Tell me. No one, all good, huh? they cannot do anything. How do you know inside of you? Just open it, huh? I am just, we are going to you know, crush, crush all these you know, strongholds today. Hallelujah. Now, how many of you think that the devil, the you know, devil can do something with me? You no, know, if I, if I, okay, this, this, you take this example. If I won't pray today, how many of you believe that the devil can come and attack me? You believe that? Okay, good. How many of you? No one believe. Okay. How many of you believe, you know, if I want the read Bible today, they will come and attack me? Okay. How many of you believe if I uh, uh, do a sin, they will can come and attack me? Nobody believes that, huh? You believe. Sisters? Believe, huh? You believe. Sister, what about you, sister? You don't believe. Devil is there or not? Devil is there. So, you know, we, we have an understanding that devil is so powerful, okay, he can, he can come because he is full of wisdom, you know, people, our people see, show that devil is so higher than Jesus Christ. Don't forget, if you won't pray, tomorrow night you will see bad dream and they will come and, you know, spoil everything. If you want good offering, they will come and steal your amount. You, you know, he will send your children to hospital. I, you know, I have all this experience, that's why I am just telling this. If you, if, you, if you don't fast this week, all temptations will come. Don't stay with unbelievers, they will, they will attack you. Don't you know, eat from an unbelievers house. How many of you believe all this? How many of you uh, hear about all these things? Don't eat, eat from your friend's house. They will put some uh, tricky thing inside and then uh, deceive you. How many of you believe this? Yes or no? No, don't believe. Good. Hallelujah. So this is for people who are believing all this, all these false things. First of all, you have to understand, devil was created such a in such a wonderful way, with wisdom, with beauty, with perfection. But what happened to him now? What happened? He was destroyed. Not on the cross, actually. I will tell you what happened on the cross. When God Throw him out from the heavenly realms, he was destroyed. Just imagine what happened to a, a beautiful, beautiful you know, cup. If it's, if it's just put from up, what happened? Shapeless, purposeless, useless, and powerless. This is what the state of devil when he came to the Garden of Eden to tempt Eve. Why? No, you know. The Bible says he is a cherub, right? Now, why in the Garden of Eden he was not able to come as a cherub? Got it, that? Because when he was destroyed or when he was sent, you no, know, I mean, uh, thrown out from the heavenly places, he was humiliated. He was like what? A snake who is what? Snake? What did it do actually? Did you know that? Ground. That shows the humiliated level of this cherub. Hallelujah. Do you think that uh, this devil can do anything against men directly? No. No, he cannot. Because he lost his wisdom. He lost his beautiness. He lost his shape. He was destroyed. But now in the now in the garden of Eden, he came as what? Serpent. 
Why? What is shows? You should ask these questions. How many of you ask this kind of questions? Why the devil should come as a pun in the garden of Eden? How many of you think? Why the why devil not came as a man or came as a He is a cherub, right? Why he not came as a cherub? Did you ever thought that? You should think. Because he was humiliated such a way that he cannot directly come and attack. Hallelujah. Did David try to attack Adam and Eve? No. What he has done? Huh? Lied. Lied. He has lied. It is like you know, last time in Bible study I was telling the same thing. You know, it is like you know what happened. So you know, there's a good, good, you know, rich man. He has a security guard in his house. Okay. Now when this rich man found you know, this fellow is you know stealing something, what he has made? He he you know decided to send this security fellow outside the house. Now what happened to uh, this fellow? He is not getting any benefit from from the rich man. He lost his job. He is not in the position. What he do now? He will go out and tell this rich man is such a bad fellow. This rich man is such a bad fellow. Don't go on uh, work in his place. Don't trust him. That is what devil has done in the garden of Eden. Nothing else. Hallelujah. You know he shows in a snake. He injected sin, his nature, into whom? Into Adam and Eve. Hallelujah. He has not attacked. You know, uh, one thing, okay, how many of you believe that devil can bring their diseases? Devil can bring diseases. Okay. It is not devil that bring the, bring the diseases. It is the same nature of man is bringing the diseases. Hallelujah. How many of you believe that devil bring diseases? Believe right, yes or no? Some people believe, some people won't believe. Some people believe, they will, will bring disease. Disease is not, no, he cannot uh, create. What happened is that this sin nature in us has the ability to bring any worst kind of things in our life. It may be a disease, it may be a curse, it may be a you know, bondage, whatever it is. It is not what you know, devil is every time coming and you know what plugging you some disease. It is not like that. It is a sin nature in us. It is sin nature because sin uh, who is the source source of this sin nature? Who? I just told you. Devil. Devil is the source of sin. He injected the sin to Adam and Eve. What happened? You know, like you know, uh, when you know uh, how many of you know about the snake bite? What happened? In the snake bite. Yeah, poison will it flow slowly, 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 it will reach the head and bring death. Hallelujah. That's what happened in the land of Eden. He injected the lie and corrupted the entire system of Adam and Eve. It has corrupted the entire system of Adam and Eve. Not only that, it has corrupted the whole creations. Everything which was under the authority of Adam and Eve was corrupted when the sin nature entered into Adam and Eve. Hallelujah! Everything around them, everything God has perfectly created for Adam and Eve was now in what state? In a corrupted state. It is not, no, uh, we are not seeing the complete perfect of this world. Are we seeing that? No. It will come, you know. We, we will. We are going to have a new world. We are going to have a new earth, where we are going to live with our God. There we see the perfect beauty of His creations. Whatever we are seeing the world, you go to America, wherever you go, just small, small things. There is not the real perfection. The real perfection will come in the new earth. Hallelujah. So you now this devil is just, just a what? Just a powerless. And his only weapon is what? Lying. Only weapon is lie. So this weapon of lie is destroyed on the cross of Calvary. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Are you getting it or not? On the cross, Jesus was no, not destroying the devil. It's not that in what? In the Bible says in the book of Ezekiel, God has destroyed him, thrown out from his place and destroyed him completely. But on the cross, this life, this is the weapon which he used against uh, God. And he started impacting the lives of people by telling the lies. All the religious system in the world, all the belief system in the world is running with these lies. Hallelujah. This is the only weapon that was taking people away from the from believing Jesus Christ. But what Christ has done on the cross? You know, uh, Adam and Eve, they, you know, uh, devil says what he uh, said to them, David, or the, or the serpent. Do not. If you, hmm, if you eat from this, you will become like that God. So God is hiding it from you. So they, they were, you know, trying to bring a scene that, hey, God is not. See, He has given you all authority, but He left something for Himself. He left something for Himself. He is keeping something away from you. Hallelujah. Now, if you know. In my house, you know, you know, somebody come and tell to Abhishek, Abhishek, everything is there only, but you know, this one he won't give to you. So, what happened to him? Okay, so dad is not giving this thing to me. Let me try to take hold of it. Yes, come on. This is what happened in the Garden of Eden. Nothing else. He was trying to tell to Adam and Eve that God is not loving you. You are just, just loving you, but you know, not always, no, not in everything, but on the cross, Bible says, God revealed how much he is loving us. Hallelujah. He has given his only begotten son and, and, you, know, and you know, told to this liar, see now, I am giving myself for my people. Hallelujah. Who can understand? The breadth, the height, and the width of God's love. Hallelujah. But always, this devil tried to deceive us with all these false things. What is that? Ah, Jesus, Jesus died for you. How we know he died 2000 years back? If the sins are forgiven? Hallelujah. Yes or no? Okay. So now, you know, uh, when we uh, come to New Testament, now, uh, I was just trying to figure out how the you know, devil is you know, working. He is working with. No, I cannot find any place that no, no, devil came and give a curse to a believer. Devil you know, came and you know, give a disease to a believer. It's not. But there are places it is mentioned you now how devil, devil is working in the New Testament. Okay, you know, let us, what we can see, you no know, uh, apostles. You no, know, uh, no, uh, they were seeing David was happen as what? Okay, you no, know, how they were looking at him. Okay, let us let us see see that from the scriptures. Okay, we can see in the book of Romans 16, 17 to 20. Romans 16, 17 to 20. Now I urge you, brethren, hmm. not those who cause divisions hmm. and offenses, hmm. contrary to the doctrines which you learn, hmm. and avoid them. Hmm. For those who are such hmm. do not serve our Lord Jesus hmm. Christ, yes. but their own belief. Hmm. And by smooth words and flattering speech, hmm. deceive the hearts of the simple. Deceive the? Hearts of the simple. Ah, okay. Next, next one. For your obedience has become known to all. Hmm. Therefore, I am glad on your behalf, hmm. but I want you to be wise in what is good and simple concerning hmm. you. Ah, next one, next one. And the God of peace will crush, of peace. Will crush Satan under your feet shortly. Hallelujah. So, uh, what you are able to understand from here? Now, normally, we take that last word only. What is that last word? The God of peace will 
crush the enemy under your feet very soon. You know, you know why? Why you know Paul is suddenly talking these verses? We have to go to the begins that we know the what is the context. There are people who are preaching false doctrines. They deceive you with very nice words, very nice explanations, but they won't present Jesus Christ. They won't present Jesus Christ. You cannot find Jesus Christ in their in their sermons. This has happened at the time of apostles. It is happening now also. Hallelujah. So how they will deceive the churches? How? He will preach. He will use people to preach false doctrines. Read the prayer. Once again that. Now I urge you, brethren. Ah, yes. Show those who cause divisions, divisions and offenses, offenses contrary to the doctrine which you learned and avoid. Hallelujah. So there is a there is a perfect doctrine about this gospel is there. We can find in in, in the books of Acts, you no, know, in the in the scriptures. It is about Jesus Christ, you know, uh, if you take this particular you know, context, it, it is talking about what happens in the in the uh, church on those days. There were you no know, people who you know uh, come and teach the uh, brethren. Brethren, you accept Jesus, that is fine, but that is not sufficient. They will say, what they will say? You believe in Christ, it's all good, but as a sufficient, you have to follow all the traditions of Old Testament. And you have to believe in all, all, all the Old Testament, uh, Old Testament sacrifices. You have to do all those things. Is that the doctrine? Is that the uh, real doctrine? This means any uh, 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 doctrine which is against the free gift of righteousness is a false doctrine. Hallelujah! Any doctrine which is against the free gift of Righteousness is a false doctrine. If somebody say, you pay money, you will be blessed, it's a false doctrine. If somebody say, Christ died, uh, died for you on the cross of Calvary, he became poor so that you will become rich, that is a true doctrine. Anything which is not out of the finished work of Jesus Christ is not the correct doctrine. Bible says all your sins are forgiven. If somebody come and you know tell you uh, your sins are forgiven, but your yesterday sin is not forgiven, you fast for that. It's a lie. They are questioning you against your righteous status. Hallelujah. Bible says all the sins are forgiven. Which means what? Your yesterday sins, today's sins, tomorrow's sins. What that means? All means what? All means? All. What that means? Up to death, our sins are forgiven already. That is the grace of God. It never means that we go and do sin. We will, we will say, God, what a great God you are. You are loving me such a way. Uh, you know, let me ask one thing. You know, in the, in the flights, we have the life jackets. Right? How many of you don't like to put it and jump while the flight is on the way? No, right? No. See, grace is a way for us to escape. It never means that what? Since I have life jacket, let me try to jump. No, we know the value of the life jacket. We will keep it there. Thank God for the life jacket. Thank you God for your grace that you have forgiven me completely. You have accepted me completely. But many times, they will, or his agents, or the false teachers, they will always come and tell you there's some sin in your brother. That's why your job is, you know, not good some uh, you because of your sin only your family problem is there. If you are a believer, your sins are forgiven. No, and you know uh, another thing, there is you know uh, come and tell your workers. You have to fast three days. Very difficult race. Now generational curses are there upon your life. I can see that one snake is snake is uh, snake is on your head. I can see some snake is on your leg. I have went through all this good experience in my life as a Christian. Thank God that he has revealed me the gospel letter. Hallelujah. So all these kinds of, no, it's, 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 no when they say, it's like a you know, big story. Oh, is it so? We, we just believe, we accept what happened. We believe in that 
curse. We believe that lies. Bible says Jesus Christ become curse for you. Jesus Christ become sin for you. And he has given us his righteousness to us. We are no more sinners. We are no more sinners. We are no more under curse. This is what the scripture says about a believer. But what the uh, devil says? He says, no, 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 correct. This is how, this is the one of the way the devil was playing with the church in those days. Are you getting it? Okay, the, the next example. Let us go to 1 Peter 5, 8, verses 8 to 10. And you know, see, here also there is one good thing, you know, in, in this Romans 16, 17, 20, you know, God is you know, giving a hope. Don't worry, guys, I will make these people crush. Along with the issue, you know, God is giving a promise to the church. The God of peace will soon give this enemy under your feet. Okay. Be sober. Be vigilant. Preach. Be sober. Be sober. Be vigilant. Be vigilant. Because your adversary is the devil, hmm. walks about like a roaring lion. Oh, walks about like a roaring lion. Be careful, brother. Lion is around your house. <coughs> Be careful. Lion is watching your job. Lion is watching your financial situations. Lion is going to uh, what? What is that? Attack you. How many of you? How many of you hear these things before? Hallelujah. Ah, then brother. Oh, seeking who may he may devour. Resist him. Resist him. Stand steadfast in the faith. Knowing that the same suffering are experienced by your brother. Knowing that the same suffering has? Are experienced by your brother in the world. Okay. Do you know this context? What is this context is about? He said, means every day morning, David is waiting for me to enter the car. Today you go and somewhere. What is, what is the context there? It is talking about the afflictions and the persecution against the church. The persecution against the church was demonstrated as a roaring lion on those days. Hallelujah. It is not that you know, the devil will sit on our ways, he will come generally and will attack us. <laughs> in in, in Assam's, we are, you know, long back we had the, what is that? They call, they, they call one man. See, they will gorilla, gorilla, gorilla attack. You know that in Assam, Assam they have that uh, guru attack. So what we think about him, you know, he waiting for me to enter the car, enter the bike, on the way today I will hit him. This is what we believe. Yes or no? This is a lie actually. You know, I'm just trying to tell you, you know, people in the court, this process for that. What? Devil is like a roaring lion coming and waiting to attack and kill you. Now, we also believe this lie. Then on the way we go, our bike will hit somewhere, we will say devil hit me. Correct only. Pastor, that is correct. Brother, what you yes, said is correct, brother. David is attacking me. I should pray now. Prayer out of fear is not prayer. Prayer out of fear is not prayer. Prayer should out of faith. Fear and faith will not stand together. Love and fear will not stay together, which means any attribute of God and the evil cannot work together. Got it, huh? So this is not talking about what? This is not talking about devil will come and attack you. It's talking about the persecutions which the believers those days went through. Hallelujah. Many of them were thrown in front of lions. Many of them were thrown in front of lions. Many of them were fire. Burn. Many of them were their their uh, heads were yeah. So, so all these things were happened on those days. So he is arguing them, stand fast in the faith. Whatever happens, if somebody come and tell you, forsake this faith, otherwise I will kill you. Tell them no. I believe in Lord Jesus Christ. You kill, kill me. That is what he is talking about. Hallelujah. Are you getting it actually? So first one was what? A false doctrine. And the second one is what? Persecution and the afflictions. You know, even from our, our family members, even from our, you know, our, our, our friends who are not with them. What is the use of following Jesus? All this is their nonsense, brother. 
Simply, simply by your wasting your time going church. Come with us, we'll go somewhere else. This is how, what do you do? He will try to deceive us. He does not.